Hello guys, today we are delving into a notorious horrible homeless murderer in Los Angeles. Well, I actually living in Los Angeles. The homeless issues have been a potential threat to people in our city. It doesn't feel like a story to me, but rather, it feels so personal that you could feel those things could happen to anyone around you. The 24-year-old Brianna Kupfer was an ambitious, beautiful young woman with big plans for the future. She grew up in the Pacific Palisades, about three miles north of Santa Monica, with her father Todd, her mother Lori, her little sister Michaela, and her brothers Tucker and Brandon. She graduated from Brentwood High School, where she played soccer, ran track and field, performed with the dance team, and was a cheerleading team captain. After graduating high school, Brianna enrolled at the University of Miami, where she participated in a study abroad program at the University of Sydney in Australia in 2018. She graduated from the University of Miami in 2019 with a degree in public relations. Brianna lived with her family at the start of the COVID pandemic. Later, she moved to Culver City and lived with her close friend, Lynn McKelvey, while working and taking courses at the University of California. She was also a member of the University of California Extension Student Chapter of the American Society of Interior Designers. Brianna's father said she was taking online architecture and design courses at the University of California. He added that she loved geometrical patterns, design, and drawing. Brianna started working at Croft House because it was a sustainable furniture company, and she was passionate about such causes. So the Croft House is a store that located in the street, not in a shopping center. As you can see from the street map, it is a wide street that you cannot see many people around. On Thursday, January 13th, 2022, Brianna planned to leave work early because she had a flight scheduled from Los Angeles to New York for a friend's birthday celebration. Brianna was the only one who worked in the store that day. There were no other employees there. At 1.36 p.m., she texted her friend who also lived in Los Angeles, saying that a man who entered the store was causing her discomfort and concerns. But unfortunately, the friend to whom Brianna wrote this message saw it too late. Twenty minutes after Brianna sent this message, a customer came into the store and found her lifeless body lying on the floor. He called 911. Ten minutes later, the police cordoned off the store. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Police said someone had brutally taken Brianna's life, and now they had to find out who this person was. Her death was heartbreaking to her family and friends. They were devastated to learn of the incident. No one know who had the motive to deal with Brianna so cruelly. But you know, this is Los Angeles. A young girl is always suggested not being alone outside. Her father, Todd Kupfer, told the Times after the attack that his daughter's death was heart-wrenching. It's torn us apart, he said. We really don't know what to do and what steps to take. We just want her life to have more meaning. Dozens of people gathered outside the furniture store for a vigil celebrating Brianna Kupfer's life and decrying the senselessness of her death. Brianna was the brightest part of anyone's day who got to interact with her. Alex Siegel, a co-owner of the Croft House Furniture Store, said. She was smart and capable and intelligent, kind and friendly, and just an incredibly driven person. Todd Kupfer was outraged when an autopsy report containing graphic details of his daughter's death appeared in the press. A 34-page autopsy report issued by the Los Angeles County Department of Medical Examiner Coroner details her gruesome injuries, including that she had been stabbed 26 times with a gray-handled kitchen knife. According to a spokesperson for the medical examiner's office, autopsy reports are public records per California law. When the police arrived at the store, they started interviewing people working near the furniture store, hoping that someone might have seen or heard something that would help get on the trail of the criminal. The motive for the crime remained unclear. Nothing was missing from the store, and according to Brianna's friends and family, she had no conflicts with anyone. She was a friendly, outgoing person, who could get along with anyone. Nowadays, it's almost impossible to do something like this and remain unnoticed, especially in a big city like Los Angeles. Even if you manage to stay unseen by other people, you are unlikely to be able to hide from the surveillance cameras located at every step. The day after the incident, the police released a video from a surveillance camera, which, in their opinion, showed a man involved in Brianna's death. 
He was dressed in dark clothes and had a backpack on his back. His face was hidden by a white medical mask and sunglasses. This camera was near a furniture store, and the time it captured this man was close to the time that Brianna's death. The authorities offered a $250,000 reward for information that could lead to the suspect's arrest. It was one of the biggest rewards ever offered by the authorities in California. During the press conference, representatives of the Los Angeles Police Department shared some information about the investigation's progress. This individual responsible for this vicious, senseless, and brutal crime, it walks amongst us. I am convinced of that. I'm convinced of it because of the reports of his activities prior to and in the aftermath of this brutal homicide, where he visited businesses up and down La Brea and along the Beverly Corridor as well. Businesses large and small. And as he walked about the area, countless thousands of people drove by, walked by. On Thursday, our officers from, South, uh, from West Bureau Homicide responded and began their intensive investigation. An investigation that has not stopped over the weekend, continues uh, every day and will continue until this man is identified and brought to the criminal justice system. And in that course of that investigation, they identified closed circuit television uh, footage that identifies some of the clues and tips that I've talked about here. They also have imagery that we put a community bulletin together that I draw the public's attention to if they've not seen it. It's available at LEPD online. It showcases an individual with a distinctive backpack, a male, African American, six foot to six foot five, thin build with short dreadlocks, wearing a painter style uh, face covering. It's been described as an N95, but it's actually closer to just a cone that you would find as a dust filter at, a, say, a Home Depot or Lowe's. These are very distinctive attributes and a very distinctive ident identif identification. And I'm convinced that in a community that, has be that began its outpouring to me and the, the members of my senior staff and the Wilshire, uh, the Wilshire Station about their care and their concern for this, this senseless tragedy, I'm looking to that community today to help us solve this crime. Police also found footage from a surveillance camera that allowed them to see the suspect more closely. The same man, as in the first recording, entered the supermarket located in the same area as the furniture store about half an hour after the attack on Brianna. In a statement, the force said he should be considered armed and dangerous. If seen, do not approach. Call 911, advised the chief. Brianna's father, Todd, criticized the authorities. Todd told reporters, Crime is truly spiking and we have a lot of criminals on the streets that shouldn't be out. We have a lot of politicians that somehow forgot about people and think the key to getting elected is to support the lowest rung of our society and to give them rights and somehow that's the answer to getting votes. He called his daughter a kind soul who was trying to make herself better and everything around her better. We need to champion my daughter as a beacon of what's wrong and ensure that people recognize it because it could be their children next. It's an impossible price to pay. It was 30 minutes, but it felt like days, he said, recalling the detectives delivering the news. You don't want to hear it and you don't want to believe it. You process it a little bit, and it's the worst feeling I've ever had in my life. On January 19th, 2022, a week after Brianna's death, police announced the arrest of the suspect at a bus stop in Pasadena. He did not resist arrest. The suspect was identified as 31-year-old Sean Laval Smith. Upon learning of his criminal history, you are not going to believe this. He has arrested almost every year in the past. Why wasn't this man in prison? Let's delve into Smith's criminal records. You would find it unbelievable. Starting with minor offenses to assaulted police officer, his criminal records will shock you away. We'll start with Charleston, South Carolina, in April 16, 2010, Smith was arrested and charged with breach of trust. In June 12, 2013, he faced charges for simple possession of marijuana. In July 2013, Smith was arrested on a bench warrant for littering on highways. In September 11, 2013, he was arrested for disorderly conduct and trespassing. He was released on September 13, 2013, 
after posting a $732 bond. In July 11, 2015, Smith faced a bench warrant for careless driving, no driver's license, and expired registration. In March 1, 2016, he was arrested for trespassing after notice and released the same day after posting a $470 bond. Again in March 5, 2016, he was arrested for trespassing after notice and resisting arrest, posting a $10,470 bond and released on April 7, 2016. His criminal records will be listed more below, but I have to stop here and wondering where he got all these money for his bond, if he was alleged homeless. Then, next. In November 5, 2018, Smith was arrested on a bench warrant for general sessions and probate contempt of court. In March 13, 2019, he was arrested for entering a premises after a warning and released the same day on a $470 bond. In June 8, 2019, he was arrested on a bench warrant for entering a premises after receiving a warning, released the following day with no bond set. In November 13, 2019, Smith was arrested and charged with discharging a firearm into a vehicle while occupied. He allegedly fired a flare gun into a car occupied by a man and his child. Records show he was released in November 23, 2019, after posting a $50,000 bond. Again, where he got all that money for his bond? That is $50,000 we are talking about. And why he was not chained in prison? On June 27, 2016, the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department announced 14 active warrants for Smith's arrest in connection to bicycle thefts in the Charlotte area. On October 27, 2020, Los Angeles County jail records show Smith was arrested on a misdemeanor charge and released on a $1,000 bail. In January 2021, Smith vandalized a car in Daly City, California, and resisted arrest, biting one of the officers. He was charged with assault on a police officer and resisting arrest in San Mateo County. Smith pleaded no contest to one felony charge of resisting arrest and received an eight-month jail sentence. He was ordered to serve two years of probation, but failed twice to report to his probation officer. His probation was revoked in November. It seems like this is the only time that he was in jail, I wonder why. Because he assaulted a police officer but not a civilian. At the time of Brianna's death, there was an active arrest warrant for Smith issued in November 2021 due to his violation of probation conditions. Unfortunately, law enforcement authorities couldn't find and isolate him before he murders someone. There is something else that seemed odd to me. The authorities in South Carolina where there was an active arrest warrant for Smith, they never contacted California authorities when he was in jail for eight months. I guess the arrest warrant was just an office document duty after all. No one hold accountable for letting this man walking in the street again and again despite of what he did. Eventually, in January 2022, he was arrested in Los Angeles as a suspect in Brianna Kupfer's death. Here are the photos of Smith through the years, taken at the police station after his arrests. I really can't believe my eyes. None of the authorities held accountable for his murder. On January 22, 2022, authorities officially charged Smith with Brianna's death. The judge set bail at $2 million to ensure he would remain behind bars until the trial. Smith's aunt told Fox News Digital that he suffered from unspecified mental health issues. He was a good boy, said Velma Washington, who identified herself as his aunt, and confirmed that Smith had grown up in South Carolina. She said he had a history of mental illness, but she didn't know much about it. Smith could face a potential life prison term without the possibility of parole. If he is convicted as charged, prosecutors have opted not to seek the death penalty against Smith. Los Angeles District Attorney George Gascon announced the charges, stating that those who show no compassion for human life will face serious consequences. After taking office in December 2020, Gascon barred his prosecutors from seeking the death penalty writing in a memo that the reality is, the death penalty does not make us safer. It is racist, morally untenable, irreversible, and expensive. Beginning today, it's off the table in LA County. Smith is currently awaiting trial, and Brianna's family is trying to figure out how to move on with their lives. Todd, speaking for the family, said, 
They are doing their best to cope with the immense loss of their beloved daughter. You can't really move ahead. All you can do is move. So, we're trying to move and honor her as much as we can every day with our actions and our voices, he said, acknowledging that the pain obviously doesn't go away. It's with you every day. Brianna's her father, Todd, Mother Lori, brothers Brandon and Tucker, and sister Michaela started the Brianna Cup Foundation. We will be championing causes dear to Brianna, such as environmental and social justice issues, as well as honoring victims like Brianna through the protection of women and social betterment, Michaela wrote on the Foundation's website. We believe that Brianna was and continues to be a guiding light of pure love, and that with more love in this world, we can transform it into one she would be proud of. It starts with the family and with the community. Those who loved Brianna made sure her 25th birthday was special, even though she was no longer alive. Hundreds of people who knew Brianna crowded into the Brentwood school track to run, do yoga, and at one point release butterflies. We miss her. It's a day to kind of celebrate and enjoy each other's company and really think about her throughout the day, her father said. This case is a piss-off one. It all come back to the same old problem about homeless people in the street again. They are not only pee and poop in the street anywhere you go, now they are trying to kill anyone they feel, and in the end, so-called mental problem is their protection. Let's hope this guy will never walk out of prison again, stay in prison his whole life. So what do you think, guys? Please share more of your opinions in the comment area. As always, take care of yourself and your loved ones. I will see you in the next video. Bye.